Spy satellites, stealth fighters, the atomic bomb, these were all once top secret weapons programs. It makes you wonder, what other secret technology is the U.S. military working on now? And could they be working with allies from another planet? According to one foreign government, this video proves it. September 2018, the Mediterranean Sea. An F-18 is approaching the deck of the carrier USS Ford. It looks like a pinpoint precise landing, but then, as it goes to touchdown, we actually see a triangular-shaped UFO, like something that would be right out of an alien movie. And you're like, whoa, <laughs> let's rewind that. The object definitely doesn't look like any known military aircraft. And that triangle shape, that means something. Historically, UFOs have been certain types of shapes. You've got cigar UFOs, saucer UFOs, and triangle UFOs. So the fact that there was a triangle UFO on this aircraft carrier, that really sent the UFO community into a frenzy. The USS Ford video becomes more than clickbait. It becomes international news. The Iranian state media declares it proof that the US is plotting with aliens to take over the world. And even when this official version of the video surfaces, same plane, same ship, but no UFO, people aren't convinced. Some are wondering, hmm, is this original video really the original video? Or did they edit out the triangular shaped UFO to keep us from knowing that they actually are harboring alien spacecraft? The US military's so-called black budget for military research and covert ops is estimated at about $50 billion a year. Is this video proof of your tax dollars at work? Let's check in with our experts. Science writer and forensic video analyst Mick West notices two things right away. First, look at those shadows. The sun's rays are all parallel. They're all the same angle, like that helicopter angle. But if we go to here, it actually needs to rotate to there. So they've put the shadow at the wrong angle. These all have an angle like this, and these have an angle like that. Then he stabilized the footage, keeping the deck fixed. We can see the object kind of jiggles around. Everything else is staying nice and solid, but this is doing a little dance on the deck, which is because they haven't properly registered the motion tracking with the deck at a subpixel level. Oh, and just one more thing. It looks not just remarkably, but identically <laughs> like a toy model kit of what is called the TR-3E. This particular aircraft is identical to the model that is for sale. McMillan says videos like this aren't all fun and games. When they get exploited by hostile governments, they sow mistrust and anger towards the U.S. military. That's a common tactic in information warfare. So, our verdict? Hoax. And perhaps not such a harmless hoax. Independence Day is now associated with alien invasion thanks to the Hollywood blockbuster by the same name. Recently, one of our very own viewers says he saw more than just fireworks on July 4th. And he sent us a video that has us asking, are UFOs somehow attracted to colorful aerial explosions like we are? Chatsworth, California, July 4th, 2018. John Lopez is celebrating with his family. Every year we go out in our backyard because we're able to see the fireworks. But instead of pyrotechnics, they see something far more startling. These lights. Kind of look like fireballs just floating around in the sky and then like different ones kind of appeared out of nowhere. Look closer. The lights swoop, flicker on and off, and seem to hover for more than 30 minutes. And what makes it even stranger? This is the second 4th of July in a row that John has seen them. Mom, the UFOs are back, I swear to God. I swear. They're back. Trip. Damn. So everyone was kind of shocked to see that. It left the Lopez family wondering, what had they seen and why does it recur on the 4th? Journalist and author Alexis Brooks is one of the leading authorities on UFO encounters. We've heard many stories of UFOs showing up uh, repeatedly to individuals, but the fact that it was at the same time and in the same place 
I haven't heard too often. You wonder if the fireworks display may have actually attracted these anomalous objects to the scene. Brooks wonders why the UFOs appear specifically on the 4th. Are they attracted to the light in the sky that the fireworks portray? Do they want to hide themselves in the midst of fireworks? Professor of Anthropology Michael Masters notes there's a spike in UFO sightings on the 4th and brings up a theory that they could be trying to figure out exactly what we're doing. It sort of conjures up ideas of this galactic zoo model that were being watched by these otherworldly beings fascinated by this strange ritual of independence where we explode these bombs in the air. But Independence Day has been around for 200 years. Why are the UFOs only showing up to watch now? One theory is that we've only recently become interesting as a species now that we're building space stations and supercomputers. Let's see what our experts think of John's video. And we did detect several consistent signatures across the video recordings, both made using similar make and model devices. So there is no evidence that we detected that these files were manipulated. So the videos are legit, but could they be picking up your typical 4th of July light show? I don't detect similarities with what I would expect to see from fireworks because fireworks are a momentary lapse of light in the sky. They explode and then they vanish. There's just simply no evidence of that in these recordings. Astronomer and video effects designer Mark D'Antonio looks for other explanations, like planes or sky lanterns. Aircraft have to have Federal Aviation Administration mandated lighting. We don't see that here. So I'm ruling out an aircraft. The sky lantern is slow and moves on the prevailing winds in the sky. These objects are not doing that. They're moving any which way they want. And so that rules out sky lanterns. Our aviation expert, Tim McMillan, considers that the objects could be flares. If there are flares fired from a aircraft, you would see them spread out. I would say flares would, would be pretty unlikely. And finally, there's always the possibility of drones. Could someone be operating a drone swarm? Maybe drones operate off of battery power. And so if you're operating a very high powered, high illumination light, that's less time that your drone is gonna be able to stay in the air. Our experts can only say these lights might be drones, but they can't be certain. So for now, our verdict, these are genuine UFOs. So maybe we are truly living in the land of the free or we could just be part of a galactic zoo entertaining the ETs. We've told you before about Lake Superior and its long history of wicked storms, shipwrecks, and anomalous sightings. We'll add this to the list, a close encounter between a Great Lakes freighter and a UFO. June 2019, Eric Rintamaki is in search of a unique rock called Uperlites that he discovered. It can only be found using a specific black light. I'm probably one of the most famous rock hounds in the world. Suddenly, very different glowing lights in the air over the lake catch his eye. Let's push in. It looks like two objects are flying perfectly in line with each other, or they could be two lights on a large object we can't see. This is the craziest thing I've ever seen in my life. The lights make no noise, and watch this. One passes directly over a ship. It's a thousand foot iron ore freighter to give you some reference on the size with that video. When Eric checks in with the freighter, they report that they didn't see or hear anything out of the ordinary. Eric watches the orbs for almost two hours, and then they seem to start watching him. Yeah, it's moving towards us, like real fast moving towards us. Author Alexis Brooks has heard of UFOs trying to make a connection with humans. This we see uh, quite often in uh, UFO footage where the light will become more illuminated, almost as if there's a communication going on between this object and the individual that's watching it. So this to me is extraordinary, absolutely extraordinary. In a prior episode, we discussed the sighting of an alleged ghost ship on Lake Superior. That turned out to be a mirage of a nearby island. Is there some other optical illusion at play here? 
Let's check in with our ACE video analyst. Regular viewers will know Michael Primo as our video forensic analyst. I did not detect any evidence to support that this was added into the video recording, that this information was created by computer uh, imagery. So the video is real, but Primo says the camera's image quality is poor. We have a camera that's essentially not recording as accurately as we would expect when you point it into the sky and, and try to capture this information. Next, astronomer and video effects designer Mark D'Antonio examines whether the orbs could be something man-made. One keeps fading in and out. We're not seeing any blinking lights that are mandated by the FAA, so we know that they're not aircraft. It's not impossible that they might be drones. However, one thing to know about drones is they actually have their own set of lights, and an orange light is not typically one of them. And note that Eric tracked these orbs far longer than any consumer-grade drone can fly. Aviation analyst Tim McMillan wonders if it might be the most obvious culprit of all. The planet Venus is very commonly mistaken for UFOs because it, at certain times of the year it can be extremely bright. However, this object is giving off kind of an orangish glow and Frankly, it appears to be much larger than even Venus at its largest points would look. D'Antonio thinks the object's orange glow is the key evidence. To me, this object matches a sky lantern profile. It'll get it'll dimmer and brighter, dimmer and brighter, and it'll start to flicker and finally go out. But what could cause the objects to seem to approach and then retreat from the beach? Cell phone camera footage is really hard, especially at night where you have a black sky and a singular point-like object. And what will happen is the camera will try to focus on it. It's called focus hunting or focus seeking. And it will go big and get bloated and then shrink down again as it tries to focus. And somebody could mistake that for an object racing toward them and then racing away. But just because the camera can't hold focus on the orbs doesn't explain what they are. And Eric and his clients saw them for over two hours, far longer than sky lanterns can stay aloft. It is categorically a UFO in that it's unidentified. This was not a hoax. And while it might not be an alien craft, it remains a genuine unidentified object. What's for certain is that Eric Rentamaki is still out there hunting Uper-like rocks and now UFOs. Happy hunting, brother. May 15th, 2021. Hamid Vitalis is walking along the Brooklyn Promenade on his way to work at his freestyle rap channel when he looks out over the Manhattan skyline, whips out his phone, and captures this. And um, I'm over here on the promenade looking at some going on. And when I looked at the phone, I saw three dots, so I looked up in the sky, and I said, hold up, don't, like, wait a minute. They were basically sitting in a solid pyramid formation. Three orbs of light hover in the sky. They appear to be stationary. Then a plane appears from the left, passing across the sky toward the orbs. And right when that plane came, that's when they started darting off. Yo, where'd they go? And only one stayed, and then the one darted off right in my face, and also I was like, well, hold up, <laughs> wait a minute. What did I just witness, y'all? Let's play that back, zoomed in, and slow down. The three orbs form a triangle. They seem to hover right over Manhattan as a plane, though small moving lights approaches them from below. And two vanish in an instant. Where the lights go? Yo, where they go? And then the third slowly dims away. Why would UFOs be so attracted to the flavor New York is delivering? Uh, some people believe UFOs uh, go to where all the action is because they, they, they pick up on the energy. Well, like moths, you know, they're attracted to the light. UFO sightings doubled in New York City in 2020. One theory is that in the pandemic, people were taking the time to check out the night sky. The other obvious reason could be that UFOs come here to observe more frequently when our planet is in crisis. Our experts are in a New York state of mind. Let's see what they think. Mark D'Antonio says Hamid's video's metadata is consistent with camera phones. He thinks it's authentic and unaltered, but he doesn't see anything special in their shape. Well, any three points makes a triangle. 
So if you're going to see three objects in the sky, you're always going to see some form of triangle. D'Antonio quickly runs through what he thinks the orbs could and couldn't be. If they were helicopters, then we would expect them to have their own recognition lights. They don't. Now, could they be drones? I don't believe that's what we're looking at. You'll notice that they're also really, really orange. What I see is what could be a classic case of a sky lantern. Our aviation analyst, Tim McMillan, has a very different idea about what they are. I think the biggest uh, problem with them being sky lanterns is the fact that it, how bright they appear to be. McMillan thinks the bright lights from the big city would drown out those from a drone or a sky lantern. He believes the answer is just a matter of perspective. It's extremely difficult to, to judge the distance, height, altitude uh, of aircraft. And when you're just looking at a, a couple of bright lights in the sky, it's even more difficult. There were flights arriving at New York's LaGuardia Airport roughly every 10 minutes that night. And McMillan wonders if these are landing lights that are much farther apart than they appear. Oftentimes, you know, you can see these lights uh, up to 100 miles away. And so I think we're looking at here is a series of aircraft that are coming in on an approach to the airport there with their landing lights on. It's giving this illusion that they're in this triangular pattern or because they're at different altitudes as they're coming in. There are over 3,000 flights in and out of New York City airports most days. And if these are three planes, they are probably about five miles apart from each other as they approach for landing. Their lights would easily be visible from Brooklyn. But how could they seem to disappear? It may actually be that the aircraft have turned in banks, so they're no longer facing them directly. Both D'Antonio and McMillan are pretty confident about their conclusions, but we're going to go with McMillan. Planes are far brighter and more numerous than sky lanterns over New York. Hamid is shooting a video for his rap channel most nights, so if he discovers any more freestyle in UFOs, we'll drop the knowledge right here. In a previous episode, we debunked this viral UFO video out of Miami as a fake, in part because there was only one witness. What the f is that? Holy Now we look to the Florida skies again. This time, we have lots of witnesses. And thankfully, one was a loyal viewer who sent us his own video. February 9th, 2021, Southern Florida. Stuart Eck is on the road when a flash of light makes him pull over. It's not the police, it's this. Oh my goodness. Awesome, it's sunrise. A large white plume unfurls across the sky, growing larger and larger. He's not frightened, but he is amazed. You see the shockwave go out? Oh, wow, awesome! I looked over and uh, it was a giant flame in the sky. Take another look. As the light passes over Stewart, it leaves behind a massive trail. It ballooned out like it was exploding or something very different was going on. And it was one of the most incredible things I've ever seen in my life. Not everyone Stewart talked to was as smitten with the object. Unbelievable. It scared a lot of people to death thinking it was some type of, of weapon coming in from outer space. Florida is a UFO hotspot. It's actually second only to California. There have been 7,000 sightings of UFOs in Florida since 1998. But UFOs are consistently reported to fly without leaving visible exhaust or contrails. And there's another theory, a very human, high-tech weapon reported to leave a distinctive exhaust trail. The Chinese military already claims to have developed something called a hypersonic missile. As the name suggests, it travels at five times the speed of sound at low altitude. That's a game changer because such a weapon could make it from the human missile silos in central China to Washington, D.C., evading radar and existing air defense systems until it is already well over U.S. airspace. And American nuclear submarines reportedly now have their own hypersonic missile, dubbed the Sea Dragon. So that might be what Stuart witnessed. Another theory? This is some new rocket being developed by a space entrepreneur like Elon Musk. Notice how both this 2017 SpaceX launch and the one in Stewart's video have glowing contrails due to an effect you may have seen in an earlier episode about a suspected Chinese rocket. While it's dark on the ground, the rocket and its contrails are high up enough to be illuminated by the sun, even though it's over the horizon. But exactly what sort of rocket, missile, or other craft could be creating the huge exhaust trail in Stewart's video is a mystery. 
SpaceX's Falcon 9 has become the most flown operational U.S. rocket, reaching orbit 24 times in 2020. So could this be another Elon Musk venture, or is there something else more troubling going on? First, astronomer and video effects designer Mark D'Antonio considers if this could be a jet going supersonic. When the jet approaches the sound barrier, you'll see a condensation front along the front of the jet. In moist air, a speeding plane creates low pressure areas where water condenses in a vapor cone. As the plane speeds up, the cloud moves down the body. And when the plane breaks through the sound barrier, it outraces the water droplets and the cone disappears. What we're seeing here, though, is a continuous plume that's persistent. So this is definitely not a supersonic jet. Our aviation expert, Tim McMillan, thinks he can narrow it down further. That teardrop shape and, and that contrail there, that is characteristic of uh, you know, some type of rocket or potentially a, a missile test. But when McMillan checks the SpaceX launch schedule, he rules out any Elon Musk-related UFOs. So could this be a new weapon system, like the Sea Dragon? The U.S. is just now kind of getting into the hypersonics game and, and trying to develop more operational hypersonic platforms. When D'Antonio digs deeper, he finds the U.S. military had tested submarine-launched missiles in the area that day. But the military won't say what exactly was launched. If it was a missile test of some kind, it's probably a missile that they don't want you to know about. Despite the strange appearance, we're calling this one a rocket or missile launch. But what rocket or missile, we may never know. What's clear is that the U.S. is in a race to develop unstoppable hypersonic missiles. So we may be witnessing one of the very first tests.